everybody, how we doing today? Uh, Dale Labracta here, your favorite balloon entertainer. I'm, I'm working on a project here, and I thought I'd share it with you. I, if you followed my YouTube channel, you know that I've used this mic in the past, and I've got a headset. The reason why I abandoned this mic, it's a great mic, but the problem comes about is I, I touch the, the stand, and every time I touch the stand, the vibration comes through, and you hear the dum dum and I'm constantly, if, if you've watched any of my videos, you see I'll be talking like this, and then I don't feel like the mic's high enough up, so then I readjust it up, and I just readjusted it down now. I, what the heck, I'm not even using it. So today, what I'm going to do is make a shotgun, actually it's not a shotgun, it's called a shock mount. And I'm going to be using a PVC pipe, some normal tools that you have if you have a stand, this may help those people out there who, like me, are doing YouTube videos and have a Yeti mic. These are great mics. Uh, let me take off my homemade windscreen here. Yeti mics are great mics, but the problem is, you know, anytime you touch anything, they just literally make noise. So let me take my mic here apart, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a holder that actually holds this huge three inch mic in place. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a bin that by rubber bands is going to, actually it's not rubber bands, we're using balloons. Hence I'm a balloon guy. And, you know, the balloons are going to break down just as fast as rubber bands. So the mic's actually going to balance in between here. Now, there's a couple things that I could do. I, I looked at the size. This is a four inch diameter PVC pipe connector. This is where you take two pipes and you connect them together and you put the glue in there. I, I don't want to have such a huge holder for it. I want, I want to actually cut this in half. And that's going to be my first task and my first problem is cutting this in half because I really only want half this size to actually be able to hold this in there. I think it's going to be strong enough with the bands that I use. It'll grip it and hold it. So the first thing I had to do was I went to the big box store and I got my PVC pipe. Then I have my bracket that normally will connect to the stand, to my mic stand, and then you put the microphone on it. Well, I took the mic part or that mic holder, that U-shape, off. And I went out, this was the most expensive thing. This was like a buck fifty, buck sixty-nine, something like that. This right here, this hinge is for a let me zoom in here. This is a hinge that you would get from a shed that would lock a shed that you would close and then you would latch it and put the lock on right here. Well, this is the latch that let me take it apart. This is the latch I need right here. Actually, this is an expensive one because this actually goes in, swivels, and then locks it where you don't need to have a key. But I needed this device right here. I needed this part right here to be able to put this clamp on. And that's going to hold that onto my mic stand. And then this is going to be the tube here. But like I say, the tube's too big. I want I actually want to make the tube smaller. Then again, I'm looking at it and it may be better because it's going to rest up against I may I may not even cut this now that I'm looking at this folks. This may be better because it's going to sit like this up against my pole. And that's gonna make it much easier where if I did it this way it may bend. So I, I'm, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to save myself a lot of time because, like I said, I was originally thinking of cutting this in half. My only concern was that if I start putting the controls buried in there, I'm, I'm going to have to adjust them. But to be honest with you, I don't play with. I mean, I would have the mute button in there, and if I wanted to mute something. Stick my finger in there. I don't know. We'll try it. If, you know what? I'm going to do it 
do it, I'm going to build it this way, and if it becomes a pain in the butt, I am just going to cut it down then. It'll be easier because right now it is March. Hey, it's St. Patty's Day. Ah, la, 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 la. Uh, yeah, it's March 17th. It is miserable out here in Chicago. I don't want to work in my garage. That's why I am in my kitchen, and those people who are freaking out that I'm doing tools, power tools in the kitchen, uh, we're in the process of remodeling the kitchen. So, and not that I'm looking to destroy the kitchen, but the kitchen's going to get destroyed eventually. All right, so let's let's go through this. I got my PVC pipe. I got my connection. What I'm going to do, probably, I'm going to since I'm doing it this way first. Uh, I think this is the way I'm going to go for now. I, I have less cutting to do. The cutting that I really have to do is I need to put notches in here because I'm going to put the balloons and I'm going to create a shape. So I, I'm going to put the notches in and I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to use it the ruler with because it's, you know, ease of use here. So I put a notch in here, notch in here, crisscross it. Little, I'm gonna do. I want to do three, so I'm gonna offset it a little. Offset it a little. Do they need to be perfect, perfectly spaced. I don't think so. I'm just eyeballing it. You know, if it worst uh, scenario, it doesn't work. I just go out and I buy another dollar fifty pipe. Voila. All right, so there we go. Put my lines in. All I'm going to do now is, you can barely see it. I'm going to take my cutter and just cut ridges in. And I got my multi-purpose tool here. I don't know the depth, and actually, looking at, I, I mean, I'm just eyeballing this, folks. I probably need to get a saw that will actually cut better widths. So, let me do this. I'm going to get you a saw and uh, be able to cut it, because then it's going to give me even. Because right now, I got really butt ugly, butt ugly lines here. So let me take a saw. I'm going to make this pretty. And you know what I'm going to do? I want it all at a certain depth. So let's take a balloon. I know, isn't this ingenious? I'm going to use this as my depth gauge here. So I'm going to just put a balloon around it. Oop, got air in here. I don't want... Yeah, balloon. Not like I haven't eaten a thousand scraps. Not scientific, but it gives me a line that I know that I'm going to be cutting down to. I know, there's somebody out there, you know, who's going to leave me a comment. Where's your safety glasses? Totally forgot about them. You know. I'm in the kitchen. I mean, how many times have we used power tools? This isn't uh, giving me a lot of dust. It's just a small little drill. In fact... It's missing some of the teeth. That's why it's giving me such problems here, giving me even clean cut. So let me do this. I'm going to go get a saw. And then it'll make it easier for cutting. All right. So as I said, it's the dead of winter here. Or not dead of It's March. And so I found, you know, people are going to look and laugh at me. But uh, I have a lot of nice equipment. And, uh... Can't get to it. It's buried in the garage. It's winter. It's cold. It's March. It's spring. I mean, it's it is spring already, but you know, it 
it's like to work in the garage when it's cold. Nobody likes to do that. So I'm just going to quickly make these nice clean lines without cutting myself here. This is going to be better. to have clear audio. I mean, it's crazy what we do. But that's, I mean, that's part about building your own studio. Now, I know my wife's going to say, how often are you going to use this? I'm going to be surprised. I'm going to use this more than I think. And that's the whole thing is setting up a studio. A lot of times you set stuff up just for a one-time use. And then you realize down the line that, man, I'm using this thing all the time. Or, as my dad would always say, if you got the tools, you use them. I mean, I do some voiceover work, and when I do the voiceover work, I use this mic. This is my go-to mic for a lot of the stuff. Now when I'm doing videos, do the fact that I need to be able to, you know, this is shotgun mic on top of the camera here. Uh, I have my headset so I don't hear the squeaking of the balloons. But I do like to use this mic. This is a real, I love the Blue Yeti mic. That is one of my favorite mics to use. It is a high quality mic that, uh, if you've never used it, the Yeti mic is really good due to the fact that it is a suppression mic. So it, it makes the, uh, this, this audio is probably going to sound tinny. You know, do me a favor, if you've never followed this channel and uh, you are an artist, uh, do me a favor, click like, uh, don't click like, click notifications, subscribe. So many people watch these videos and don't subscribe. Remember folks, subscribing to a video, it's free, it's nothing. We're all looking for something to binge watch. Why not binge watch my show? You know, you learn something in the process. I learned something in the process. Right. Looking much nicer. Just trying to pull off these little burrs here. Oh, this is going to work fine. See, so I've notched this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the balloons. The balloons are going to wrap into these. Let's see here. I don't have it set up right, but see if I could just give you an idea of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to have this in there. And this is what's going to hold the balloon. So what I'm, or hold the mic. So. Just gonna make a. Just gonna cut this in half. Scissors. There we go. Scissors. I'm gonna try with a half balloon first. See if that's gonna be sturdy enough. So, voila. Take another half a balloon. Now I could really color code this make it cool colors if I want. I think I'm just going to use the teal. I have one more. Now what the purpose of this, and you may be wondering, why, what does this actually do? The balloons act like shock absorbers, and when I actually touch the mic, that little vibration goes through and is being picked up by the mic. What happens is these rubber bands now will actually absorb that little friction and, in theory, kill it. That's that's what it's supposed to do. And I've seen this. I got this idea. I didn't come up with this idea, folks. Uh, I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. It actually came from... Whoa! Did you see that? I almost shot you. That wasn't planned. It just flew off. This uh, idea has been around on the Internet for a while. And like I say, because of COVID, people are doing more things. So here, here's my spider one. 
is my spider web. Now I'm going to do another one on the back side, just to make sure. But what I want to do is poke this through. And half a rubber band works. Oh! Maybe not. I forgot the circumference of this. Maybe I should put this in here first. Let's go this way. Yeah, I think this will work better this way. There's one. Line it up. I actually have a dent in my microphone. I dropped my microphone. I know. And I actually have a crease right on the top here. Let's see where this this one. Now I I could go out and buy one. Yeti does sell one of these, but they want twenty nine bucks for it, and I'm being cheap. Uh, why? I saw it on the internet that I could make one, so I'm making one. Wow. There it is. Uh, am I leery? Yeah, I want, I want to put one on the bottom. But I could see where the vibration would actually be absorbed by this. Because I'm actually shaking it, and there's nothing for it to actually hit. Just this one. So, I mean, yeah, I think if I put uh, the ones on the bottom, that's going to give it nice support, and that's, that's going gonna, that's gonna to work. I don't believe it. It's actually going to work. I built something here. So let me take these off. And I'm going to try going to the opposite end. All right, let's line this up here. All right, so this is almost finished here. This is finished from this point. Now, what I need to do is be able to drill my holes mount this. This is my bracket. So what I want to do, I'll find a spot that's a wider section here. Like this. Yeah. Alright. Hold this down. Well, we got rid of that lake house. <laughs> my, my fishing, my dream fishing area. If you know me, I love to fish. And doing that, I got like an additional 20 power cords. So I've always had a lot of power cords. Power cords, I've always, like I say, all the tools I've ever had uh, that I've gotten from my father or that I used to purchase are all power. Uh, there's no, no battery operated stuff. The only thing that's battery operated is my pump, my balloon pump. Other than that, everything else I have is plug and play. Except for my car! Alright, let's see. Come on, get in there. Alrighty. There's my mount. Let me show you this. I had two screws on the inside. 
two nuts. I got two on the other side. They're in deep into the plastic, so I'm not re really worried about that pulling out. There we go. I got, I got my support. Man, we're almost done. All right. So I have my balloons in this. I took a different color for the bottom. Why? Because I can. All right. On here, because it's easier for me to actually slide these off put them on the brackets that is me trying to fit everything in. Now, the last thing I need to do is put this together with this. Now, this was almost a perfect fit. You look right here. Look, th this was almost a perfect fit, except you see the little gap right there. And, hi, right, you guys got these things, I'm sure. I found a plastic washer. The odds of me finding a plastic washer seemed like one in a million. But I was like a winner. I was like, whoa, 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 I got it. It fits perfect. So now I'm going to put that plastic washer in. They got to go in a very specific way on two different sides here. So I just have to get the holes to line up. There we go. Man, it's almost done. I'm getting excited. Yeah. All right. Look at that. There we go. I don't. I, I want to cut another notch in. I have to cut it. Ah! All right. I'm going to finish up the notch and uh, then we're going to test this out in just a bit. All right. So I got it all put together here. It's quite sturdy, it's not going anywhere. You can see here's the inside, the back side. It's being held. I screw this on right here. Now, now it, the mic should be able to shake and not take any of the vibration. So uh, I'm excited. I want to go try this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all this stuff upstairs, put it onto my uh, computer, and give it a go. Let's see how this works. All right, I'm back in my office. I got my Yeti mic all set up again. I have this little device here, shaking it around, moving it around. Hopefully, now I'm gonna try adjusting. I adjusted, move it back up. This is, this is, I don't know if we're gonna pick up the hand taps. Sometimes when I, I tap the mic, but this was usually when I would find myself where I was sitting. This is, this is why I create it. Because if I'm doing an interview, I, I sit here and I, t I play with the mic and I, I will hold the mic and I will move the mic. And uh, like I say, I'm trying to avoid. All right, so I just... Uh, did a recording. I, I'm actually putting the screen guard because I noticed I was popping my sounds and that this screen does help. So I've reset it up. It, you can see that my mic's out of the way now. So I think I have everything set up just perfect. And uh, hey, thanks. Make sure you click on that subscribe button and never miss a video. Subscribe now. Click the little bell and always be notified of a live broadcast. Follow me on Instagram, and if you're a TikTok fan, you'll find me under the same name, Dale LaBrocta. Looking forward to seeing you on social media.